All right. Good evening, everyone. And my name is Kukulitsu Mahlangu. I'm going to be your host tonight on another session of Farm Spaces with Food from Zanti. We do have Food from Zanti here, but I think they're having network issues, but they'll slowly join us as the session goes on. So now without any further ado, let's get the show started. So just a few house rules. We are going to let our guest speakers speak. But to make the session interactive, Farm Spaces is all about knowledge. Farm Spaces is all about learning. So you guys are more than welcome and you are free to ask your questions as the session goes on. So just request to be a speaker if you want to hear our speakers um, clarify or maybe elaborate on something or you have a question to ask whilst we are speaking, please um, this is the space to do so. Um, this is a space where we're going to get information from the farmers themselves. So I just want to encourage everyone to, if you have questions and maybe you're struggling with network, please also feel free to DM me. I will read your questions aloud. So now let us start the session. I'm going to let uh, Noko um, introduce himself, tell us where he, he's from, what he does and where he's based. Hi, Noko. Um, hi, Gugu. How are you? I'm um, good, thanks. Uh, How are you? I'm, 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 I'm fine. Uh, my name is Nogo Siboni. I'm from Limpopo. I'm a cattle farmer, mainly with uh, Brahmans, but we do have other um, breeds that uh, we work with, but mainly we are focusing on the, on the, Brahman, uh, on the Brahmans breed. So, uh, basically, uh, Choosing the breed of Brahmans um, is because of the our province um, Limpopo. In terms of summer, it's it's it's, it's extremely hot, um, and so therefore the Brahmans they can be tolerant to the extreme heat of our province, and also due to their thick skin and they can be they are resistant to 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 such uh, insects and some other ticks and so and 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 so forth. So it's 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 a uh, it's a it's been a pleasure working with this breed and thanks to you also thanks to you Gugu and also the listeners. Um, okay, then um, to start with my presentation. Um, All right, uh, Noko. I think let's do um, introductions first, and then we'll we we'll start. We yeah, are with the presentations. Um, I see food from Zanzi is here. Hi, food from Zanzi. Hey, Gugu, it's Dawn, um, Numdu, audience and engagement editor at Food from Zanzi. It's great to be back with you, and I'm really excited about how we can save money for farmers. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, Food from Zanzi, um, and Dawn as my lovely co-host. Um, now I'm going to move on to Ipeleng. Ipeleng, please just kindly introduce yourself, tell everyone who you are, what you do, and where you're based. Um, thank you, Gugu. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ipileng Kwadi. I'm the managing director of Mutsotelo Farming Enterprise, which we basically own organic vegetables. I'm one of the directors of Mutsumutala Farming Enterprise, which is a family cooperative where we are breeding a quality bonds maraketo. And I'm also on the mentorship program of food security pillar from the office of the premier in the northwest province and yeah my everyday task includes farm visits going out there working with the youth youth around northwest identifying their challenges and see how we can present them in the in the office of the of the mec and yeah in 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 short i i love what i'm doing traveling around south africa meeting new farmers with brilliant ideas, sharing topics. So yeah, basically I'm happy to be part of the panel this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ipileng and Noko. Um, I think uh, Ats is having network problems, but he will join us shortly. Food from Zanzi, um, fire away. Maybe you guys can take up the session and ask um, our speakers any question. So I think maybe we could just start with step one. Um, what are some of the practical ways farmers can um, save cost? What should they be thinking about? Um, I think Ipe Leng, you are quoted in one of our articles that we did about this, basically focusing on um, reducing wastage. So maybe we can just kick off with that to start the conversation. 
Um, thank you very much, Don. Yeah, um, I was featured on the article on the 24th of February 2021, which was written by Duncan Masiwa with the 10 tips to cut down on animal feeds. And if you can look at the article, <laughs> there is a picture of pigs outside, which means when I asked him, why did you choose the pigs outside out of all the animals? He was like, you know, uh, the pigs consume a lot of feed. So yeah, uh, our speeches with other seven farmers where we were sharing our tips on the management of reducing the cost of feed in our farms. So, during my presentation, I'll be quoting some of what other farmers have shared on their tips. Um, first of all, um, I'm one of the pig farmers in the Northwest province. And with different experience to pig farming, you'll realize that uh, pig farming is very expensive and pig farming needs a lot of management and a lot of attention. So there's a lot of ma uh, mathematics in terms of the management of feed. So a little bit background about my piggery program. Uh, in 2020, I started my, my, my piggery program and I was alone. I decided to buy 40 pigs, uh, 40,005 balls. And during uh, the, the farming, I decided that yo, there's a lot of management, there's a lot of money, it's costing me a lot. And the mistake that I've made was trying to save the cost by compromising my business. What I did, I approached my friends to come and invest in my piggery project. And those friends, they had no idea about farming. They were just ATM farmers. They would just pop out money and pay and without wanting to find out what is really happening on the ground. So as the time goes on, the maintenance was very high and we had to compromise the health of, of, of our pigs. So at some point there was an outbreak of pigs where all of the pigs had, had died. So at some point I was forced to pay back my friends who invested on my business. So those are some of the things that we learn every day that whenever you do a business, you need to put down everything on white paper because in farming, it's a lot. there's a lot of risks. So yeah, I had to compromise my piggery project just trying to save the cost because uh, they costed me a lot. That is one of the major problems that I've done. I did not do the research before I started my piggery uh, program. So do, uh, uh, throughout the, the presentation, I'll try to I'll try to highlight and especially based on on the article number five where Duncan featured me where I was saying record animal feed use and wastage. So I'll, I'll humbly ask Nuku to start with his presentation so that I can also prepare mine. Thank you. Nuku, fire away. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Kuku. Thanks to you, Peling, and uh, also thanks for uh, thanks to Food from Zanzi. Um, the experience that I have um, in terms of this topic of today, um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cattle breeder, so I'll be focusing mainly on 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 cattle because that's what I breed with. So I don't have any experience with other things like um, chickens, your pigs, and everything. So my mainly I'll be focusing on the on the on the cattle. So. Um, what 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 we do um i believe in 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 that we 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 feed less and we graze more we 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 tend to uh, we we save money by supplementing for value you know um animal feed it's 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 very it's very expensive and 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 it it costs a, a lot of my a, a lot of money so supplementing is very vital in terms of um um, development and for growth of your of your head uh, mainly as because as farmers as farmers is is very important to to have to have a, 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 a supplement program so therefore our supplement program should be in line with our vaccination program so that once you start supplementing you must know when is the right time to supplement and what is it that you're going to use to supplement and also you must and also you must um you must, you must make research of what are you going to supplement with 
and therefore it's it's it's, it's very ask you about that it's very important to keep the record of the growth of your head because um you might find that within your within your head of cattle there are those that um that there are those that don't don't lose weight don't lose conditioning all run of the year so you must always try to maintain your supplement on a on a lower amount so i've been i've been uh, i've been in this i've been doing the uh, cattle farming for some years now so mainly uh, we have where 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 i farm we have a uh, cattle we have grazing camps so normally it doesn't give us uh, stresses when coming to to the feeding and supplementing stuff because we normally rotate our cows within the within the grazing cattle so we're working on a um, seven camps we have seven grazing camp, uh, seven grazing camps so we rotate the cows within the camps on a period of 3 months so it doesn't give us that uh, much stress but i've been working with some other farms to help them uh, with uh, with the supplementation issues and also those that those uh, those that are farming on a on a on a on a communal land so basically the experience that i i i saw the things that i i saw happening with those that are farming on a on a communal land is it is, is is that the the cows are roaming freely and they they tend to to take in to take in things like um your plastics and your card box of which they 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 play a, a very important role when 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 trying to to supplement because you'll find that your cows are losing weight your cows are the conditioning is bad in terms of giving birth there are a lot of abortions some of those cows that they they are they are failing to 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 pick up so it's 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 very important also on uh, on that so i've been uh, i've been on 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 a program that we 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 we, we managed to create uh, from the area that i'm from uh it's a it's a rural area where all the cows that are just roaming around in that they are they're consuming a lot of things that are not good to 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 their health so i've been helping them in terms of the supplements um in terms of the vaccination program that um cuz most of them they were using chicken chicken litter so i've i've been giving advices to them i've been helping out to them that um chicken litter yes they are good for health but we, they must keep in mind with the vaccination program that i've given them that they should look into the butcholism they must um, vaccinate with pujovex 2 to 3 weeks before they before before they will start to 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 supplement so that's that's uh that's the that's the experience that i i i i i want so but uh, from my side i um um we are we we are using um um grazing camps so for in terms of supplementing for us doesn't give us that much stress but we do supplement at some point but we have like uh we we could go we can go about yes maybe 2 to 3 years without supplementing because our grass this side is 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 good even though now in in winter the grass is grey still good the conditioning is still well and yeah thank you uh, nuko i actually have a question that i i need to understand when it comes to animal feed costs is it advisable to cut down and is it, is it advisable to make your own feeds you know because most people are are telling us that it's it's not a good idea for you to make your own uh feeds it's good to buy um the feeds so i just want to understand from a farmer's perspective if we are cutting down on feeds can we just make our own yes you do yes yes you can yes you you you, you can mix uh, you can mix your own feed but you need to understand that when you mix your own feed you must know that you will be um supplementing for profit you can't just supplement on 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 you can't supplement cows that um 
that doesn't give you that don't give you a, 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 a profit maybe okay like myself was now i'm 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 i'm, I'm supplementing i'm i'm doing self mixing i'm using um rumavite uh, urea fit grade and calorie 3000 of which is 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 giving me it's giving me uh, uh, um good conditioning it's it's it's, it's giving me results in terms of um uh, uh milk production uh, those that are those that are that gave birth in about uh, two, two to three weeks ago, in terms of uh, milk product, uh, milk production, they're giving me they're giving me results on that. So, yes, I I would say it's 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 good, but you need to understand what kind of uh, product are you going to use, and you must also understand that um when 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 you feed. Okay, most of our farmers, so what we're failing to do is is we are failing to understand that um even in our grazing camp, you you need to. You need to walk around the camps. You, you, you need to 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 see how the uh, how the cows graze. Where do they graze? Where do they start on the on the or, or on the grazing camps? What uh, what types of grass do you have? And what is it that normally you 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 you, you might find that um you can feed you can feed once the cows are going out for grazing. They they eat less they eat less they are depending on you to give them more so what you must try is to make them eat more and give them less thank you maybe i can come in here gugu um thank you so much noko for all of your feedback you've given us lots of practical advice um Ipe Leng, um in the article um on food from zanzi you also highlight the importance of record keeping um, I'm not sure if you mentioned this in your introductory comments, but how important in this, especially when it comes to feeding animals and making sure that whatever you eat, you actually keep very good record of it. And then my next question, maybe both speakers can come in here, is around buying feed in bulk um, to save costs. So what would what advice would you give in terms of that? Um. um thank you, Don. Okay, on my articles on the record. So, on the door of the rooms of the pigs, there is a record keeping book. Even if I don't make it the whole week to the farm, I should be able to know who fed the pigs, when and what exactly did they, they feed the pigs. Uh, so that if the weight of, of my pigs does not perform good, I know who to talk to. And even if a winner gets sick, we should be able to make trays. So, yeah. Uh, on my piggery feed management plan program, we do a lot of record keeping because uh, in, in, in Pigari, you like as I've said on the introduction, that there is a lot of management and it, it, it requires a lot of a, lo a lot of record keeping. Uh, the piglets, the winner, the girls and sows and the bow. Okay, in the piglets, ne? Uh, the piglets, they depend on the yamam for 28 days. That means, obviously, you are saving the cost because you don't have to buy anything. It's just that... Uh, sometimes it happens that the, 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 your sow can die during birth. So that means you'll have to buy milk for, for, the, for the piglets. So sometimes another option, if you want to save, uh, you can look on, on, on the structure if there's any other pig that is breastfeeding. Uh, then you can take those piglets and, and just put them on the pigs that are breastfeeding. So they also save costs of buying of buying milk, and our winners they need because they need a lot of a lot of high protein because you you, you after twenty eight days you are you are winning those piglets, uh, you you are removing them from 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 the mom, uh, you need to at least start feeding them uh, for two weeks with a with a starter that costs about three hundred and ninety fifty kg, so that is a lot of money. And remember, as farmers, we we attack. We, our main target is weight on the pigs, and those pigs are stressed. You, you, they need you need to relieve the stress from from removing them to their mother. So, 
sometimes to work around you know you need to be creative and you need to to see how you can be creative on your on your on your management so normally on my winners i get the pick grower as well uh, uh, up to 16 weeks and to work around that i use the concentrate like uh pick grower but the, the most thing that i normally i normally uh, use it's a chop which is morocco in setswana uh, i use a chop because it has a lot a, a lot of protein so another thing after 16 weeks remember they are ready for the market so you need you can keep those 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 uh, peaks in the structure anymore you need to let them go because they'll be eating a lot of a lot of, a lot of feed so now on my girls uh, my girls those are peaks that have not yet gave birth after five months those are your breeding stocks after five months either you take some to the auctions and some you keep them for breeding purposes you need to start introducing them to the bull and sow remember we are trying this method of of, of developing our own feed where you can be able to feed your own pigs but the reality is that uh, most of, of 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 the farmers when you ask them what is it that you 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 add to your pigs they don't they will never tell you exactly what they eat what, what they are what what, it, what is the Exactly that. Denga, I, I was with him on the article when Duncan was writing the articles on cutting down the feed cost. And these are some of the points that he raised. Uh, he said, you, as a farmer, as a farmer, you do not just have to, to buy. You need to compare the prices. It's very important to compare the prices. You don't just go to a shop and, and buy. You need to compare to compare prices check with other uh, service providers uh, how much how much uh, the, the 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 feed that you want to buy how much it cost so utenga is also a livestock auctioneer uh, he also advised farmers to always compare feed prices and do research before physically visiting the supplier and i hate don't just drive there also you will find that the supplier is too far try and partner with several other farmers to purchase in bulk Bulk, to buy in bulk, even collaborating with two or, or other three farmers can make a difference. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ipeleng. Um, Tenga is actually trying to join the space. He was here as a listener earlier, but we seem to be having technical issues, but I'm sure um, Gugu and I will sort it out. Thank you so much for your feedback. Noko, do you have anything else to add to that last question? And then I'll give over to Gugu. Um, thank you. Uh, thanks very much. Um, as Ipeleng said that you need to compare prices and before you, you can go to to, to buy uh, the feed. And also you should, you know, um, as farmers, um, we, we tend to use, um, we, 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 we tend to seek information from, 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 from other farmers of, of which it, it's, a, it's a good thing. So some of, some of the information we get that, um, some of the information we get some of the farmers use the old fish and uh, models of 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 feed of which the the breed that you 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 have doesn't um respond to the to the to the feeds or to the supplements uh, in terms of growth and in terms of the uh, uh, body structure mainly uh, on us cattle farmers what To, to 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 respond to, to the feed that you're using are your cows um going to 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 be able to to give birth to to 
to the calf. And also keeping in mind that uh, when you feed more, it, it, it creates a risk of, um, in, in, in small heifers, um, they might not be able to, to push out the, the calves. Um, as I said before, that it, it's very important to, 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 to supplement, to supplement on a, on a lower amount of supplements based on, on, on the head that you have because some of those some of the cows doesn't uh, doesn't lose weight doesn't lose conditioning throughout the year they are all round us no matter the grass is gray or what wind uh, rainy and stuff the cows are always in 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 in, in good shape so it's very important to 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 do a research on the fees it's very much important to to understand the feed that they're going to use is very much important to also understand the breed that you you have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, Noko and Ipiling, uh, for such a wonderful, elaborate details on what animal, animal feeds are and basically how to save costs. And I see that Ati Ngosi is here, Dawn. So, um, hi, Ati. Maybe you can start by introducing yourself. Tell us who you are, where you're based, and what you do. And give us tips. How do we save on animal costs? Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for waiting for me. Uh, it was quite difficult to get on, but anyway, let's jump into it. I am co-founder and managing director at Lizwe Meat, which is a livestock auctioning, or the first black auction company in South Africa. We also do livestock transporting as well as business consulting for agriculture companies. In addition to that, I'm also the managing director of Dengo Farms, which is which is a fourth generation run uh, beef ranch uh, farm located in Pedi. So yeah, um, I think that that's about it. Uh, I'm a bit late, so I don't know how far you guys have gone into it. At Nkosi, I just love the sound of that. I'm a fourth generation farmer. <laughs> It's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, we've covered a bit of ground, but maybe you can just talk about some of the things that you highlighted in the article on that's on Food for Mzanzi around buying in bulk. I think we did uh, mention that, and I think Ipeleng also mentioned that you spoke about that in the article. But what are the other ways, and what are the ways to save costs without compromising on the, your produce and your animals and your animals' health specifically? Okay, so I heard a little bit um, with regards to the specific types of feed which my fellow co-speakers elaborated on. So let's say, um, as because I mean cattle, uh, I'll take example from Noko, I think, is, is the cattle farmer. So if you have a look at DZ strategy, um, you know every single year going through winter is, is a tough issue. Essentially, it's a re reoccurring problem. But if you're able to put some money aside for the following year, and you're able to negotiate a contract with supplier, it might not even be in your area. Let's say you and 10 farmers uh, going together that you're going to buy a certain amount of feed. It doesn't have to be the full amount of feed that you might need for that period, but it might be a certain allotment that will get you the, 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 the buffer. Because what happens when there's a drought, like what happened in 2016, for example, when uh, the, the, the feed guys, um, whether you buy silage, whether you buy the, the pre-mixed ones, the prices go up. And whoever has the, the biggest war chest or rather the biggest financial muscle is the one that's able to get in the, the, the feed. So if you're able to negotiate quite early, it might, need, might, might mean that you have to put in some financial uh, skin in the game for that. It might you have to put in deposit the, the previous year or the, the year before you get the feed so that the, the farmer or the shop or the supplier we're going to buy from understands that you're committed to it. And then there should be a contractual agreement that binds all parties. Because even if you go through a period where that winter you didn't necessarily need that feed, it does not necessarily mean that you, you can throw away that feed. Because as farmers, you all understand that, okay, if there's feed, I can buy in wiener cattle, for example. The winners, for example, I can buy winners from another farmer that didn't reach the, 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 the weight that that farmer wanted. So I get them cheaper and I push the weight up to the desired weight for the feedlots. So I'm making my money back. So it's, it's, I think it's, it's a way of, of foreseeing the future, but understanding that there have to be certain steps which ties parties into that agreement. Thank you so much, Ati, 
for that. I actually want maybe you to touch on on the numbers. You know, um, how much does you guys are all into cattle, so we'll stick to cattle. How much does um, you know, a cattle eat a day, and how much do you guys buy uh, the feed for the cattle? So maybe just give us the numbers. Okay. So the first and foremost, when you're buying a farm, um. The carrying is it's what's called carrying capacity, which, uh, basic terms, is the amount of animals a certain a certain allotment of land can uh, uh, sustain. So let's say you buy a farm; it has three hundred LSU, which is large, um, what's it, large frame cattle. So if you buy a farm which has three hundred, which can take three hundred cattle, it doesn't make sense putting four hundred cattle on that farm. Because now you're going to have to sub- supplement the additional 100 cattle on that farm. So essentially, you're not running a sustainable operation. Now, every single year when it comes to winter, for example, uh, you will have to supplement. It's, it's inevitable. But whereas, wh- whereas you can identify the, 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 the stocking, stocking units on the farm, let's say it's 300, right? And you know that um, for the past five years, we haven't had a serious drought but you understand the cycles of the, the weather in your particular area. Let's say it, it goes through a, a semi-drought or reasonable drought every seven to eight years. So you know that the, 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 there's going to be a drought at one particular point. So instead of stocking 300 cattle on your farm, you might push it to 280. And that 20, 20 um, stocking rate, which is spare, buffers your farm so that if it goes through a drought, you, you are not suffering and it will allow your farm to recover faster. So the, the fundamental thing when you buy a farm or lease a farm is to understand the stocking rate because some farms are, are in the thousands of hectares, but they are not as efficient compared to other farms which are smaller but can house the same amount of cattle. So with us, when it comes to feed, what we do is we, we, we buy the minerals because we, we are adhere to the stocking rate. Unless there's a drought uh, uh, or there's a, a below, uh, below seasonal rainfall, then we start buying in feed. But even then, we don't feed every single day. We feed twice a day, and that's it. So not, not twice a day, twice a week, So and, and that's it. But uh, not not to the point where you're feeding every single day. As soon as you start feeding, every, uh, as soon as the animal becomes accustomed to feeding uh, out of a package, you're losing money, essentially, because your business is not structured as a feedlot. Because a feedlot is one which is, ident- which is structured that at a certain point, they get an animal at this weight or push it to this weight. If it finishes early at that particular point, they can sell it to the arbiters. So, as a as a as a a weaner product, as a fourth generation cattle farmer, where our family business focus on weaner's production, that's what we do, because it doesn't make sense feeding uh, uh, cattle, and then you know you don't you don't know what's going to happen with the kilo. Yes, the kilo has been relatively good now but you must take into account that it might go back to what what year was it 2012 2013 when the kilos were around 20 rand a kilo for for winner so you, you always have to have that um, conservative approach while as also pushing efficiencies on your farm thank you thanks so much atin grossi um, Kuki, if I could maybe just ask a question specifically for new farmers out there, someone that really has no experience, um, doesn't come from a long generation of farmers, first generation, what are the people or where are the people that they need to find to be able to give them advice besides hosting this amazing session and learning from fellow farmers? Um, who do we really speak to? Um, do you need to have someone that can come and look at the animals and see whether the feed that you're using is working? whether to up the feed, feed less. Um, what can you really do if you have limited or no experience um, as a new farmer specifically? Ati, maybe we can hear from you, Ipeleng. Okay. Okay, Don. Uh, okay, go. Ate, you can go. You can go and go wait. Okay, thank you. Look, uh, thank you, Don. Um, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a new farmer, um, you need to at least have a mentor, someone whom you're going to ask questions, go to his or her farm, uh, get experience, ask questions. Uh, you know, like there are a lot of pig farmers who are making so many mistakes and whom are finding it difficult to sell their meat at the abattoir 
during the meat inspection, you know, because they'll be feeding their pigs uh, the waste and however, and you must remember that uh, they will really fail at the abattoir with the, if you are feeding a lot of waste. And so with pig farming, you really need someone who's going to mentor you and who's going to go with you through the steps and you need to attend this tra uh, training skills. And... Yeah, because uh, another thing that I'm worried, I'm worried about pig farmers. I think uh, in some few uh, sessions of farm spaces, we've tried to host uh, the farm space on animal feed, where we wanted pig farmers to work together and see how, because if you can look at the articles, 80% of our profit goes to the feed. So we really need to work together in seeing how many of us can can produce some crops that we're going to use to process and how many of us who can really start processing and get to those machines and work together collectively. Because the reality is that in pig farming, it's, it's really tough. If you really have to outsource a, a feed, it becomes a problem because most of your your, your profit, it, it, it all goes to, 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 to the feed. So yeah, as a young as a young farmer, you need someone who's gonna be there. Like we've got a lot of mentors. I'm I'm happy with these farm spaces. People like Boman Noma Temba, they do share Bunoma Temba and Mohoro. So they're one of the good pig farmers in in, in, in in South Africa. So yeah, I think I'll give this one to Ate. Thank you. Um Ate, you for, for my opinion, because I've seen so many uh, farmers um, make a decision on farming on passion, and f passion is, is right. You need passion in farming because when the days are tough, you need that passion that's going to drive you. But the first and, 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 and fundamental thing is that you have to know what you want, and it has to be based around finances. Because you can have a passion, but if the finances don't align, you are wasting your time, you're wasting the following generation's time, it's just a, a, a reoccurring knock-on effect. So first and foremost, whatever it is, whether it's chicken, sheep, uh, goats, some guys feed goats, um, pigs, the finance, the financial model has to be sound from the get-go. Because if that is wrong, everything is wrong. And then you understand that fi uh, farming doesn't necessarily have a high margin when you when you take into account the production, then the selling point. And again, in farming, it pays a big sum in one go. And you have to take that money and spread it across 12 months at, at some cases. In some cases, it's 18 months, for example. So the financial model has to be done. And, and what we do at Lisa Meet, we have a consulting section where we help farmers who want to restructure their, their, their current family businesses, uh, the their private companies, so that in the in event that, uh, I don't know what happens, maybe the father passes away, the main driving force of the business passes away, the, the farm or the business is structured in such, a sense, in such a case that it's actually an offensive model because it allows for situations like that happen. Because as, as me, myself, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, most farmers don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't even know whether the next generation is going to take over. You know, in any case, whenever the next generation takes over, there's always a, a dip in the family-run organization or the business as such. But if it's structured from the get-go and you know, and everybody is clear about what the structure is and everyone's clear about th this is a profit organization, everything from there, there's a golden thread which flows all the way through production. And now it comes to issues like feed, for example. You know that uh, you're going to buy or rather, you know that your stocking rate is 300. It doesn't make sense to go to 400, whereas you know, on that 300, I can be sustainable for 10 years. And on that 400, I can only push it for two years, if it's two years. That's if the favorable conditions in the area. On that 400, uh, let's uh, continue. Um, I might damage the, the felt, and that the felt takes seven years, for example, to recover, depending on the rainfall and depending on your inputs, which you will be willing to put into your pasture. So for, for, for me, uh, I, I just think it's the financial aspect. That, that's the one thing where I think um, some farmers don't, don't necessarily understand your selling price. And then from your selling price, you need to work backwards and uh, uh, really drill down into expenses. Thank you. 
Thank you, um, Ate, for that. And I think that puts it into perspective that, um, you know, in as much as we want to save on animal feed costs, can we afford to save? also you know so it's very um smart i think for farmers and new farmers to get into the farming space and understand how much their animals going to cost them and how much they're going to get out of that so it's just that pure you know cost expense and profit is very important for an emerging farmer and um now i just wanted to encourage our listeners if there's anyone who has a question for our speakers noko ipiling and ate if you guys would like to ask questions that maybe me and Dawn haven't covered, please feel free to request to be a speaker. And let's let's have a dialogue to really understand how we can save. We want to save. Farmers are always looking to save. But um, we want to save um, with the understanding of, of why we're saving. We don't want to kill our animals and feed them you know, um, cheap stuff that's not going to necessarily give them all the supplementary nutrients that they need. So um, if you are struggling to ask me questions, please feel free to text me on my DM and I'll read your question aloud. I do have a question for Noko. Noko, um, you know, when one is looking for for animal feeds, you know, they are told about lucerne, they are told about alfalfa, they are told about hay and yellow maize. Do we mix the, these together uh, and, and make, create a feed or do, do you buy lucerne to feed your cattle and that suffices? Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Goku. Um, in terms of um, in terms of the question, thank you, Gugu. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Noko. Okay, can you repeat the question, please? We just want a better understanding of the available feeds on the market. <clears throat> so the, there's lucerne. We know also about um, hay, um, like alfalfa hay. There's also, you know, corn and maize out there. Do we do we mix these together? Is it advisable to do so, or you just buy lucerne and you feed it to your cattle? Okay, thank you, Google. Um, I, uh, for that, I I think um, even for uh, lucerne and and those other things, if you're going to do self mixing, is still good. But firstly, you have to um. um Firstly, you have to understand, and firstly, you have to know uh, that what are you feeding for. Um, you 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 cannot supplement your cows for them to to have a weight while not thinking about the profit. We all are supplementing uh, uh, for profit. Uh, hence, I said that earlier on that I I I normally we we take um yes to we take yes to to to. To supplement, and uh, on the other, um, um, uh, on the other provinces, you might find out uh, there's the there's draft and the there's draft and the and the grass is not that good. But you need to understand. You need to make research that whatever you're going to feed with, is it is it going to give you profit, or whatever you're going to feed, is it going to sustain your cows for that period but the major thing is that you need to understand that we are feeding for 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 profit hence uh, as the uh, our cattle farmers we 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 make profit after 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 a, a, a long time we make profit um i would say after six months uh hence uh, as i uh, said sometimes it takes um 80 months to make profit you might find that you 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 feeding cows that they will uh, give you less on profit, hence you spending much money on the on the feed. So for that, you need to understand the model, or maybe you under, you, you you need to understand the, the 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 product that you are going to use. Are they giving? Are they giving? Are they going to give you value in terms of the profit, in terms of the structure, in terms of the uh, muscle development of your cow? Thank you. Thank you so much, Anoko. And we do have a question from Lekoa. Hi, Lekoa. Kugu, while we're waiting for the question to come through from one of our listeners, um, may I ask a question? Sure, Dawn. I was just going to ask a question around latest tech. 
Um, is, is any of our speakers aware of any new technology that would make it easier for farmers to either um, produce their own feed or processing or ways to, to highlight some of the things that were mentioned today around record keeping, you know, purchasing, managing feed, times of feeding. Is there any tech that, that farmers can look into or use that will make it easier for them? Um, with regards to, to the feed aspect, um, some farms are not, don't carry the amount of um, cattle compared to others, but that does not necessarily mean that you cannot improve your pastures. You can plant your oats, your pannicum, your pannicum, your browse grass, and that will boost your, your production on the farm in terms of holding more cattle in, in, in layman's terms on the farm, and that it decreases your cost in terms of feed. So let's say your farm had an LSU initially of 300 and you're able to plant more, more pastures um, after what takes about a year for the pasture to really develop. After a year, now it's, it's uh, 320, for example. And then the following, you add another hectare. And the following, you add another hectare. And you can even use the GM seeds um, like uh, browse grass, for example. That's a GM uh, genetically modified seed. It uses less water. Um, it's essentially, it's more efficient um, in uh, using uh, moisture to grow. So there are ways around doing that. Uh, with regards to records, you can also use your cell phone because that's what I use most of the time. Um, I jot it on an Excel spreadsheet on my phone while we're weighing the, the wieners. And uh, before you even sell the wieners, I know what weight the lot is going for. And if I'm not happy with the weight, I'll call the other guy, you know. And the, and, the, and the other guy, but one thing we make sure on the farm is that we don't, the cattle does not leave the farm until we understand what the market is doing. And with regards to cattle, everything is tied to maize. When maize goes up, the, it, 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 it links to, 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 to the price of the kilo for, for, for beef specifically. So we, we understand, or rather we, we seek to understand the market before we even approach the, the point of selling. Right, just before the, the six-month period, you start weighing the cattle to understand, okay, that wiener came from that mother. Okay, what happened? Okay, is it going to go to market? Or even sometimes even call the guys from the, the feeders, come have a look on the farm to gauge the, the perception quite early as to what we, we might get. Because again, it, just because the kilo says 41 rand per kg, you're not going to get 41 rand per kg if your quality is not there per se. But if the quality is there and the guy can identify, okay, or you can identify from the guy's perception that it's actually quite good cattle, and then you can broach the sale. But don't go to market or don't load your cattle on the trailer and then go to market and then be surprised there at the market that you're not getting the price you perceived in your mind beforehand without doing the research. Thank you. Thank you, Ati. And just on that, we have a speaker who's who's asking if um, um, the speaker's name is Tim Biso. He wants to know: Can supplementary growth hormones assist in saving these feed costs and maximize the growth, especially when we're speaking about feed lotting? One thing I understand from the feeders, I don't have, understand the full the full value chain from their perspective, but from our perspective, what they expect from us is first and foremost is a wiener which is able to um, have a high daily, uh, average daily gain, and it has to be naturally pulled, meaning it doesn't, it must not, preferably it must not have horns, and it must preferably be a size size seven frame animal. Those are your bigger animals, um, the ones that pack meat. So with regards to your supplementary uh, uh, hormones, I'm not mistaken, that side, they, 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 what I, I think they, well, I know that they use antibiotics. I'm not sure whether they use um, growth hormones on the likes. I understand from my aspect. Uh, in the future, hopefully we'll move towards the feedlot aspect, but that's quite an ex uh, expensive procedure. Thank you. Um, Gooks, can I, can I add something on the self-mixing? Um, another thing that farmers need to know, they need to get the right recipe. 
because farmers often get a recipe from someone which is either outdated or old products have been used. Sometimes it can be very dangerous because farmers run the risk of not getting the growth they want on, on their animals. And uh, Tabo, Tabo, the youngest farmer, he made uh, something, a, a very important aspect. Uh, Tabo, one of the South African farmers, Tabo, advises farmers to stock winter feeds during the summer month in bulk and stock summer feeds during the winter month in bulk. Uh, that's the time when animal feed prices have usually declined. It's like when you buy a jersey in winter, at that time it will obviously be expensive because it, it is desperate, desperately needed for that cold season. So you'll rather buy the jersey in summer because it will be cheaper. The same goes with, with the feeds. Thank you. That's a very interesting point, Ipilin, because that's also how I shop for my clothes. <laughs> but um, but just generally speaking, um, in terms of storage, like what should farmers be aware of in terms of storing their feed, where they should store it, what are some of the risks involved, whether it's theft, whether it's, I'm not sure what are some of the issues that farmers deal with in terms of storing feed and making sure that it is still sound for, far for the animals to eat. And if you're buying in bulk or if you're buying in season, feed for winter in summer and summer in winter, what are some of the things you need to keep in mind? Um, in different seasons, now in our farms, we've got different plans. We plan each and every season, we plan our feed. So in winter, we know that uh, I have to sit down and draw the winter plan for supplementing our, our cattle. And Nuku has stated that uh, in their province, they don't have certain problems so that we might be experiencing in the Northwest province. So I myself, I know in the Northwest province in winter, our grass is very dry and we need to supplement our cows so that they don't lose weight. So some of the protein leaks, uh, some of the things that we normally uh, buy in, in bulk during, during uh, summer. I actually have a question for Noko. He mentioned something very interesting about um, animals and uh, muscle weight. So what are the the animal feeds that give animals fats, if I can say that? Um, just, just to make sure that we're on the same page. So you're trying to say what, what type of feeds are used for finishing an animal for market, essentially? Well, well, essentially, yeah. What gives the what kind of feeds give the animals the the the, the weights make them pack up weight faster? Essentially, for the markets. Okay. Uh, I don't want to plug in the 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 guys that produce the feed or rather the mixes of the feed, but you can go to any of them. Um, most of them have uh, they stock the same mixes, although they might brand it as their own mix, but essentially it's the same thing when you go into the the nitty gritties of what's in the, 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 the growth or feed mixture. Um, but uh, for, for me, with regards to cattle and the, the, the goats and the, the sheep, the grass is the best because it's the cheapest. And when there's, a, when there's excess of it on the farm, you bale it and then you store it. You store it under, you can either store it under clothes, a closed shed or open shed, which is as a top, as the roof, and the sides are open. And with regards to the the, the, the supplement leaks, you store it in, uh, you can also store it on the shed with either a closed one or open air one. But you, what is essential with the, the, the leaks, you need to store it on the pallet so that uh, it doesn't, um, what's the word? It doesn't, it doesn't, the moisture doesn't get into it. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, uh, as, um, uh, as Ante said that, uh, to us, the, 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 the cattle farmers, the, the, the grass, it's, 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 it's very, it's, it's very important. Yes. And I'm going to, uh, touch on, 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 on what Ipiling said on the, on the, on the, on the self-mixing. You must, um, um, as I said that you must understand that you must understand the product that you are going to use. Some of the, some of the self-mixing product are, are, are very are very are very um, are very toxic um, are very toxic you you need to understand that the the product that you are going to use is it is it good 
Is it good for body conditioning? Is it good for growth? Is it good for uh, milk production in terms of uh, um, those that uh, gave birth? And also keep in mind that those products that you're going to mix, some of those things that are, are, are very, are very, very, very dangerous. If fed too high or, or you, or even if you overfeed your, 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 your kettles, it, it, it might lead to, 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 it might lead to, to sudden death. So it's, 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 it's very important when self mixing, understanding, the products that you are going to use it's very important to make researches on those project i mean on those uh, uh, product before you are going to mix them thank you thank you so much noko um i'm just wondering if there's anything that if that our speakers think that we must that we should highlight for farmers listening to the session any aspects that um you think is important that we should raise um, specifically for new farmers. Ati, maybe we can start with you. Yes, thank you. For me, um, when I was starting the family business, um, luckily there was a train, so I could just jump on and then it continues moving. But for somebody starting out, understand that farming is not an overnight thing. It's a generational thing. So whatever systems and procedures you put in place, understand that the individuals going to follow you must just run with them. And uh, with regards to what you're going to farm, uh, what whatever type of livestock, whether it be grain, uh, what else is there? For the, um, you need to understand the market because you cannot put something or take money out of your pocket and put it into something and then when you go to the market, you have no clue as to what's going to go on there. Because again, with regards, essentially farming is supply and demand. That's, 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 that's the gist of it. But you need to understand what I might potentially get on a conservative basis. It doesn't mean, let's say the kilo this week is 40, it's 41 rand, for example, for winners. So the, the, the kilo is 41 rand for, for winners. It does not, I, I cannot base my calculation on 41 rand. I must be conservative at best so that whatever happens in the market, I know that I'm pushing for a conservative price, let's say 32 rand, which is grossly conservative. But for the calculation itself to make sure that every input I put into the animals, the prof, the, it, it is profitable at 32 rand should the market turn or, or go back to what it was previously. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ati. Um, I, I see there's Lekoa here. I don't know if um, he's available to speak. Lekoa? Okay. Um, but we I do have questions, and I just wanted to um, say that I'm opening up the floor for the last time. So if you guys have a questions on animal feeds, um, please utilize this time to ask our questions, your questions, sorry, to the speakers. But on my DMs, there is one from Rural Farmer. He wants to know from you, Ipiling, how much um, you expect uh, per kg at an abattoir? Okay, um, depending on your business model, pig farmers, there are some who decides to sell them. Uh, now nah, I sell the winners and my weight is at least 70 kg with good genetics. So yeah, I sell 70 kg winners. And yeah, I think I've responded to the questions. And the other thing that I wanted to ask, uh, to, to add on when Don was said, what is it that we can say to the, to the farmers out there is that they must have a market in place. Uh, search and secure a market before starting with peak production to ensure that pigs are not kept longer than intended. This will help the farmer avoid spending more on feed and other inputs. And this will also ensure that production flows and that the animals is fed uh, following the requirements, weight gain, fed content, age and others of the target market. Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Ling. And um, okay, we do have more questions coming in, so I just want to quickly finish them off. Um, Gabelo wants to know if this wasn't covered. Um, what can I feed? Preferably his own. 
um, his five month pigs for mostly meat market. So he wants to make his own feed. So what can he feed um, his five month pigs for meat market? Okay. Uh, you know, processing a, like I've highlighted that starting to grow your own feed. A, farmers need really to plant crops that supplement the animal feed. And with additional land, they can plant lucerne, uh, oats, and maize crops to supplement their animal feed. But remember, uh, these things, they need a lot of capital, like planting lucerne. My friend Yankees, uh, to plant a 10 hectare of lucerne, uh, he spent about uh, 150K. And But uh, in the afternoon, when I was talking to Mohorosi, he mentioned something that's very important about uh, the lucerne that it needs to be processed fine. Uh, normally, uh, now I control, I normally add with chop uh, that uh, there's five in one concentrate. And yeah, for my winners, uh, that's a, remember, like I've highlighted at the beginning, that the most important thing is to produce, uh, to, 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 to make the fat less and produce more money. So 16 to 20 weeks that are ready for the market, uh, I, I reduce the fat with a pig grower concentrate and I mix it with chop. So yeah, like I've said, my weight is targeted 70 kg with good genetics. Others I can keep for, for breeding. And my sows, okay, my, my goats that I keep for breeding, after five months, uh, I introduce them to bow and sow, uh, which each and every day, they eat about 4 kg. Each pig eats 4 kg, which is 2 kg in the morning and 2 kg in the afternoon. So each of this, uh, 50 kg costs up at about 270. And my sows, three weeks before birth, I change their feed to lactating feed. Remember, the lactating feed, it increases the milk because they are just about to give birth. So my boar... Okay, my boar Temba, we I feed him four kg as well uh, every day, two kg in the morning and two kg in the afternoon. So you, I mean, with such numbers of feed, uh, when you outsource feed, it it becomes a, a problem because, for an example, if you've got about twenty sows and each and every day each sow is about four kg, that, that that's that's a lot, and yeah, I think. I've covered some of the aspects and if they would, they would still li like to know more on the pig farming and the measurements of feed and everything, I can be able to share later on, on the DMs. Um, Ipile Noko and Ate, I, I think maybe I'm sensing an opportunity here. So can farmers maybe just grow their own animal feeds and can they look at maybe s selling animal feeds, utilizing their land to sell and even export. Because I'm just thinking of ways of how we can, you know, cut down on animal feed costs. You know, can we also maybe just start our own animal feeds? Because clearly you farmers are buying cattle feed or livestock feed at a very exorbitant price. So why aren't you guys growing feed and just, you know, making sure that you sell it to your farmer next door? <laughs> In, in a very interesting question, Gooks. Uh, look, now I normally ask pig farmers as well that, guys, why, why aren't you growing your own feed? Uh, with, cap with cattle farm, it's okay, it's understandable that we release the cattle during the day, they graze and they come back, we just supplement them. But with pigs, if you choose a, if you are not on a free range pig farming, like I myself and Noma Temba, you have to make sure that you stick to the criteria of the weight of the pigs. So it's a, it's a good opportunity for this, especially if you can look at the prices of sunflower right now on the market, it's doing very well. But another problem that restricts uh, uh, crop farmers, it's the machines. They are discouraged by the machines. The machines are very expensive. Tepiso bought one of the machines uh, of processing feed. I think it cost him about 400 and something thousand. So I think if we work collectively as, as young farmers and say we can, we can at least do a business plan where others will be focusing on the feed and come up with a business idea that, okay, we're going to process feed. We're going to concentrate st strictly on, on processing feed. And this is the number of youth that wants 
training on feed management, then it's something else. I mean, it's it's good, and we'll be also having a group of young farmers who'll be saying, okay, uh, we have experience of crop. Uh, we've got the land. We can be able to uh, to to supply you, uh, pig farmers or any other animals, farmer, livestock farmers with feed. Th- then they can do th- that. That is why always we we normally preach let's work collectively because it's it, it's it's a problem. If I have to farm the pigs and the cows, and at the same time I want to 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 venture into into crop, it's I mean it's an it's an extra work. So at least if we can work collectively, we can be identif- we can be able to identify those who have a strong point. Remember, even on the crops, if you don't have the experience of crop, it's another thing. So if we've got those who have done the, the crop science, who will be able to supply us, then we'll be moving forward. But the most important thing is that we need to produce our own feed. We need to start outsourcing feed as farmers because it, 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 is, very, it is very expensive. Wow, thank you so much, uh, Ipiling, for that. And I guess, guys, you know, Ipiling is reiterating what we always say. Farmers need to work together. I, I don't know why it's, it's a bit challenging and difficult for farmers to do so because the, the benefits are, are, you know, immense. You know, if you can grow lucerne and supply it to the cattle farmers nearby, you know, it's good business for everyone. So... Yeah, Ipiling, I think people should definitely, you know, follow your 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 advice when it comes to working together. We have uh, three more questions for you guys um, on my DMs here. We have from Dr. Rams. Dr. Rams wants to know. Oh, yeah. Well, he wants he has a comment. He says that farmers need to remember that when you are feeding ruminants, you are you're not directly feeding the animal itself. You are feeding the microorganisms in the rumen, which in turn converts what raw material you are feeding to useful, for example, amino acids for the animal. So thank you so much uh, to Dr. Rams. Dr. Rams is a veterinarian. So um, thank you so much for your input there, Dr. Rams. Uh, Fuku Fuku wants to know. Uh, he has 40 plus growers and they are not fully grown to meet market weight and they are about four months and he's been feeding them 1.5 kg. How is he doing, uh, farmers? So anyone can take that. Uh, no, that one, uh, he can he can DM me right now. I can be able to sit down with him and give him all the criteria. I can send him uh, so many plans on 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 on, on the, in terms of 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 meat production. I can engage with him privately on that. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, um, Gugu. I don't know if you have one last question. Um, I also just wanted to maybe hear from Noko for his last points around um, animal feed and cost. Um, as we wrap up, maybe. May you repeat that, please? I think my last question before Gugu um, shared some of the points from our listeners was just around final comments around anything that you feel that we may have missed during our discussion, uh, especially for new farmers. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, for For... For the new farmers, for the up and coming farmers, um, okay, basically, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm on cattle farming, so uh, I'm just going to give a comment when, like, regarding cattle. So, yeah, um, uh, and uh, as um, at Ante, Ante Kosi said that um, to us, grass, grass, um, grass is very important and. When you when you lease a farm or, or, or when you're getting into a farm, uh, firstly you have, you, you 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 must uh, you must you must be able to understand or maybe you must know the the capacity the carrying capacity of the farm. So, if the farm carries two hundred um kettles, uh, kettles, as he said that you 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 if you're putting more more of those kettles, then uh, meaning that your 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 production is going to be um less than you are going to spend more money when uh, in terms of some uh, in terms of supplementing and feed so um to my experience on that um we we are using um a lot of camps so it, it we we rotate the cows within the camps so we um if i could just uh, uh, um give an example in numbers 
So our farm carries like um 250 uh, 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 cattle. So in other farm we have 150. And then on the farm uh, on the other farm it carries uh, 300 cattle. So that on the other farm we have 200 cattle, meaning that um our our, our growth is 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 it's very big. Each and every each and every year it 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 gives us a lot of profit because we 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 keep a certain number within the farms so that um we spend less on 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 supplementing on feed so we graze more we feed less thank you thank you so much okay. uh, no, there is one last question uh before i think maybe we, we can wrap up the question comes from um from chief chief is like can someone tell me what i need to feed my 10 doper my 10 doper and a ram so i don't know if you guys are doing sheep anyone yeah we do yeah we do do sheep but uh what is his end goal because i don't know whether he's trying to to, to supplement or he's trying to finish for the the market Maybe we can just give him both um, answers, Ate. First and foremost, he needs to understand what the kilo is or when does he think he wants to sell the animals. And then working backwards from there, then that will uh, identify what quality of feed or you know, basically what quality of feed is going to feed them and the, the, the ratios as well, rather the weight, the portions rather, and then work backwards from there. Um, you can feed them loosen. You can get the, 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 the pre-mixed from the, the shops. Uh, you, you all know the shops, the, the cops, uh, the cops and the likes, and then work and do that. Um, but it all depends on what is his end goal. Because he might, like, for example, he said, I think, he, did you say rams or something? So I'm not sure if there are, uh, uh, or is it just rams or, I don't know, I, I don't get the, the full information, so I can't give... <laughs> The, the, the information which leads directly to his answer. I'm, I'm making hypotheticals from my side. That's fair. Um, so I'll just ask him to get in touch with you, Ate, then, and then maybe you can assist him. Um, so those are the questions from my side, Dawn. Um, any maybe last comments on how we can cut down on animal feeds? I think our speakers did a great job into schooling us and giving us tips and tricks and most importantly, making us understand what we're doing, you know, instead of just giving us information, making sure that we understand by cutting feeds, feed costs, that we also need to make sure that our animals are getting the sufficient nutrients that they need. So on my side, I don't see any questions. Dawn, over to you. No, nothing else from my side, Google. I think we covered quite a bit in today's session. Um, of course, all of the speakers who are on board um, also shared their advice on the article that I that I was referring to and that Ipeleng also referred to earlier. Um, 10 tips to cut down on animal feed costs. You can, of course, go onto Food from Zanzi's website for more details about that and for more advice on other things that we may not have covered, but I think we covered the gist of it. So I think I'd just like to encourage everyone to continue to collaborate and, and work with farmers and, you know, find out where you can get the best advice and the best information. And don't be afraid to do it, you know, alone and ask questions. So that's my last word, I think. Um, I think it's also important just to do your research. I think that all of our speakers tonight mentioned that. So thanks, Gugu. You're an awesome host, and it's always great to be on this farm spaces with you. Absolutely great. Thank you so much, Dawn, and for covering this. So for you guys who want to know how to save um, on animal feed costs, Ipeleng and Ate were mentioned in the Food from Zante article, and they gave, gave great tips as well there. So um, Ipeleng and Noko and Ate, thank you so much. Do you guys have any last words? Maybe I can just give you guys also space to just say a few words. Okay, can I go? Um, for, from my side, um, I can't remember the, the financial side uh, enough because it is everything. It is your bread and butter as a farmer. If the market is turning against you and you have not identified in advance that the market is turning, you could have been able to adjust your production or, or, or supplement or do something else previously but now because you were not able to identify the market you're stuck and the worst thing as a farmer to put in all that effort and go to the market and the market turns against you 
you know uh, it, it, it's it's de- uh, it it's depressing essentially because now another thing is for example what i've seen with the generational farmers the father has farmed but they did not um uh, farm according to profitability they farm because of passion now the following generation doesn't see value in the farm so the farm deteriorates and then usually gets sold or uh, becomes a rundown but if the individual who has the or is operating currently is able to put in systems in place and the whoever follows on just uses those systems that individual will be able to pass on to the next and that's how the that's how the the commercial guys have become commercial today is because of step by step by step by step and calculating the price and and, and especially the finances everything thank you okay uh, mr denga from my side uh, the last Option, the last uh, point that I wanted to raise was to reduce the livestock count. Um, farmers with a lot of livestock on hand should consider reducing the number of cattle they own when they see that it is becoming too expensive to feed their animals. That way your focus can be on producing on quality rather than quantity. I mean, what is the purpose of having 100 cattle but their value is equal to that of 10 cows? Thank you, guys. Uh, hi, um, I would say um, to um, Ipeleg and, and, and Ante, the most important thing is to identify the the market and understand that we 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 farm for profit. So yeah, I think uh, and don't 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 be afraid to to do farm visit. Um, you can DM us. You can contact any of um, um your local uh, commercial farmers and go to them and seek information do farms uh, um, i mean farm visit and see how things are done um there are informations that um maybe we can we cannot share here or here on farm, uh, here on farm space on how we on how we do things and how like in numbers of profit and stuff but um it's it's it, it, it's very important to to visit that those ones that are are, are doing uh, are, are, are doing uh, very good thank you uh, of course we are going to visit you just mentioned that you've got 300 cows gooks did you did you hear noko just said he's got three he's running with 300 cows i heard him i uh, <laughs> we hear you but i don't think you <laughs> I didn't see I'm running out and three hundred cows. I'm just giving an example, but yeah, we 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 in terms of um uh, we have a large head, so yeah, we okay um we 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 are farming on 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 two different farms. So on on both uh, farms we have um a lot of cattle. So as I said uh, with my interview, that mainly we are focusing on the Brahmans. So there's uh, the other farm is it's only the Brahmans, then the other farm is 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 um mixed breed, but we the our mainly focus in the it, it's on the Brahmans, but um yeah our bloodline is the is the Brahman. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to our lovely speakers. I think this is where we close our session. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Ipileng. Uh, you are amazing. Noko, thank you so much for your time. And Ate, thank you so much for joining us. I know you struggled a bit there, but thank you so much for finally coming through. And to Fu from Zanti, our lovely co-host, thank you so much for joining us. And um, yeah, guys, see you on Thursday where we will be speaking about the uh, economics of farming which will be really interesting because Ati did touch on how we need to understand the costs before we even think about farming so uh, we'll have agricultural economists on board to help us get our numbers right so thank you so much to everyone from me this is good night and goodbye thank you bye